103.9 FM, WOZO Radio, Knoxville. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Hello and welcome to Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Today is Sunday, November 29th. It's 11.15, I believe. I'm Larry Rhodes for Doubter 5, and as usual, we have our co-host Wombat on the phone with us. Hello, Wombat. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> that's my gobble call. That's so you our, survived that's, Thanksgiving then. Yeah, that's my festive <laughs> call out to all the turkey sacrifices. Yeah, so yeah. Very good, very good. And our guest today is George. Hello, George. Hi. Uh, welcome. Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we also talk about religion, religious faiths, God's holy books, and superstition. Excuse me. <clears throat> If you get the feeling that you're the only non-believer in Knoxville, well, you're just not. There are several atheist, free-thinking, and rationalist groups here in Knoxville, and you can, we'll be telling you about them after the mid-show break. Uh, also, did you know that you, there's been a streaming atheist call-in video show broadcasting here in Knoxville? and has been for over 10 years. Did you know that one, bet? This time I actually did look it up, so I did. I did, did find. Oh, good. Yeah, I cool. did find our show, and I think it was really good. I think Keanu Reeves is really good in it. Um, I love Keanu the Reeves. little green text that like flickers in the background, and he's like, "I know uh, kung fu," yeah. and he like oh. does that whole backbone thing. It's like I should have been paying attention to this this whole time. No, it did Thank raise a lot of questions, it. but uh, it wasn't our show. Our show is. Uh, well, we'll tell you more about how to watch it after the show <laughs> break okay. and uh, maybe give uh, Tyra uh, Wombat <laughs> some more directions on how to find it. Anyway, Wombat, what do you have for us today as far as topics? Hey, today we're going to be talking about the figs. We've got a food-related show we'll start with, but really we're going to be talking about like overthinking figs. Parables in the Bible. That's Not what we're going to talk about. Oh, figs, talk figs, about the pigs, figs. Too. It's all about the figs. Sure. We'll <laughs> what, what did you guys eat for Thanksgiving? Hey, yeah. Let's let's Speaking do a round table. How everyone doing? George, what'd you eat for Thanksgiving? We'll start with. I ate your filter fish. A what? I ate I ate your filter fish from the traditional the, uh, Jewish fair. Okay. For However, holidays. This is new for information for me. It wasn't as good as my grandmother's. It came out of a jar from Israel, and they okay. skimped on the fish. Oh, did they? Know? Oh, that's they, not good. Yeah, they skimped on the fish because because um, the traditional way of doing it here is they use, like, three different kinds of fish, you know, pike, white fish, and carp. And this, they only use carp. And as I understand it, carp is, is a horrible fish that um, if you carp have— Carp tastes like carp? Well, <laughs> <laughs> Tastes like well, it sounds. <laughs> no, I mean horrible. What I mean when I say horrible, I don't mean horrible tasting. I mean it's a horrible creature. It's like having Donald Trump in a pond. It oh, goes no. around. It, it destroys all the other fish. Ah oh, man, that's huh? that's not good at all. That's not good at all. I don't know. I've, I, have, I enjoy catching them on a fly rod because you yeah. get a two-pound carp on a fly rod and you've got a battle. Uh, there. <laughs> What is uh? How do you pronounce it? In get filter fish? Get filter yes, fish. you got it right. You got it right. Okay, yeah. get filter fish. We're gonna have to look that up. Uh, Larry, it's a, how- it's a mixture of three different kinds of fish, all ground up. It, oh wow! I don't want to eat that. No, it. No, it's very. I don't want to eat that. It's all a right. Develop, it's a developed and learned taste. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, 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 developed, I developed and learned it. Yes, yeah. Larry, how was, how was your Thanksgiving? What oh, you traditional. Uh, traditional, yeah. dressing, gravy. Um, With your family? Shila, the family nice. together. Sheila did a great job, and it was awesome, nice. as usual. And uh, we loved it all. It was great. Cool. My mom Very thankful. Is, uh, <laughs> my mom's up in th- uh, Virginia right now with my sister. My sister was able to stay with her. And I did not travel this holiday because, of, you know, the COVID thing. I didn't want to have anyone be risk. I'm in a different biome here. Biome meaning, like, you know, different people coughing on each other. And I don't know what I'm used to mm-hmm. or what I might be carrying without realizing it. And I don't want to yeah. go over to my mom and accidentally mm-hmm. make her sick. So I uh, gave her a really nice, good phone call. And then had some fun eating whatever I wanted to eat over Thanksgiving. So I had lots of steak. Um, I had enchiladas. I had meatloaf. I had like, the, like anything you can manage. Just like, sure, I'll eat that. Oh, scones. I had some masala chai, a whole bunch of stuff. It was sure. really great. Yeah. yeah. And then I had some <laughs> stuffing too. Try to keep it traditional. But today we're going to be talking about figs, baby. 
figs. figs. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking, this is what happened this morning. I'm sitting down thinking about like, hey, what do we want to talk about today? And there was something that had always been nagging me in the back of my mind, where it's like, if we just sat and thought about any story from the Bible, just like any random story from the Bible, just like literally critically think about it for like a minute or so, it typically falls apart both in what it's trying to message and like the logistics of what happened and the character development of what's going on. And I think I try to give myself a, like a really innocent story where it's like, I, uh, Matthew, let's see, book of Matthew. Let's see if I can get the actual verse. Uh, Matthew, where Jesus is going to a fig tree. And the fig tree is like, hey, what's up? I'm a fig tree. I'm out of season right now. I don't typically have any, you know, figs on yeah. me. Matthew but 21. 18, 18 to 22. 18 through 22. There you go. Mm -hmm. And Jesus is like, man, I can really go for some figs right now. And the fig tree's like, uh, I don't have any right now. <laughs> and Jesus is it's like, it's out of season. <laughs> it's out of season. And, and you know, like the people who cultivated me took all the figs off of me. And so like, I don't have any figs right now. I'm sorry, sir. And Jesus is like, you will never grow a fig again. I am cursing you. And the tree, the tree yeah. immediately withers at that point. And everyone's like, whoa, Jesus just killed that tree. Jesus hates figs. And it was, <laughs> and, and and all the clarity of the world passed that down to our modern times. Uh, uh, but the it's thing also is, in Mark 11. It's I think it should be touched on in each of the Gospels, right? Or they they vary though. But um, the big thing is Jesus goes up to a fig tree, no figs for him. He kills the fig tree, and it's supposed to be in a sense a parable for like. Hey, you know, I, Israel, you had your chance to, to love me, but you didn't. So that take it or leave it. There you go. That's what you get. And I'm like, isn't that, isn't, isn't that inherently anti-Semitic? But even beyond that, it's like Jesus is a character. Jesus is described in the book, if you take that book literally true, is a person who is capable of making food appear out of nowhere. He can take water, he can turn it into wine. He can add tannins and sugars and, and a whole bunch of secondary metabolites to make water literally turn into wine. He can take fish and bread and multiply it out of thin air and feed but he can't lots make and lots it. of people. He can't make a filter fish out of it. So what good is he? <laughs> he can't make a filter fish. I know. Yeah. And but he can't like look at a fig tree and be like, one, he's surprised the fig tree doesn't have figs in it, even though it's out of season. It says right. it in the Bible. Yeah. But he's just like, fig tree, make some figs for me and then help me feed my friends and stuff like that. He's like, yeah. No, not only am I surprised, but I have to kill this fig tree immediately after the fact that it won't feed me figs. Yeah. What's well, going on? Uh, here? Uh, let's talk about a couple of things there. The sure. the uh the Mark version, Mark 11, 12 through 25, says specifically it's out of season. Yeah. Uh, secondly, it says that he curses the tree, but it doesn't die until the next day when they come back and look at it. Ah. Uh, but, uh, you know, he said, may no one ever eat fruit from you again. And it right. goes off and the next day they come out and it's wilted and die. And in Matthew, it immediately wilts. Like right. it, uh -huh. the, the line there is yeah. like it immediately wilts. And I think there might even be another gospel where it's like, it doesn't wilt at all or something like that. And I just been completely glossed over right. three. And yeah. And also, like you said, uh, at, the, at that point, he says, have faith in God. And, and throw you, if you talk to a mountain, you can say, go throw yourself in the sea and it will do that. And, and it's a point you made this morning when we were talking that uh, why didn't he just tell the, the, the tree to grow fruit? Right. Uh, and, uh, did he not have enough faith in the tree yeah. and himself and God you know, okay. to, so George, to here's, make it grow fruit? So here's my, we're getting a little bit of ahead of ourselves, but here's yeah, my yeah. thought while I was reading the story. It's like, what is this story trying to tell us inadvertently? Because, <laughs> because the, this may, on the surface is trying to show Jesus is so strong that if a tree doesn't give him fruit, he's able to kill it with his mental magic powers. And I'm mm -hmm. like, wow, that's right. cool. And when I was a kid, I'm like, this guy is super powerful. But in the back of my head, it's like, this guy should have had the ability to do that, make a fig just grow or be patient enough with the tree because it's out of season anyway. It's sort of like walking into a Dollar General in April and being like, there's no eggnog in here? Where's my eggnog? I need some eggnog in here. I'm burning this place down. It's yeah. like, dude, it's not Destroy Christmas it. season. We don't have any. It's like, I want eggnog now. You will never serve eggnog again. How dare you? I'm like, whoa, 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 Jesus, calm down, calm down. Mm -hmm. But he's killing basically an innocent tree for no good reason. That probably is 
use as a source of food for the people that that grew it. Like fig trees don't just grow everywhere. Like someone planted that, probably harvests it. Yeah. <laughs> it takes good care was, of it. He killed somebody. He destroyed somebody's property. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he just goes around. It's like, I don't yeah. like you. Feed me. Yeah. It's like, well, I don't belong to you. Yeah, uh, That's another thing. Like uh, in the... Uh, one in the temple when the lenders were in there. Sure. Did he just try to set a good example and talk to them and, and tell them, you know, that you shouldn't do this in the God's house? Right. What did he do? He threw everything off the table. Oh, he went off and built his own scourge. He, he went off, d designed and built his own scourge, came back and destroyed the tables, upturned them and, and beat the money lenders. I mean, uh, you know, when you have to ask, what would Jesus do? One of the options has to be violence. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or throw a temper tantrum. George, Did you, you say he built his own storage? Is that what you said? The scourge. scourge. It's scourge. like a short whip that has little things in it that will tear your flesh. Oh, okay. yeah. A scourge, S-C-O-U-R-G-E. He went okay. crazy. Or, yeah. you know, there's a, um, there's a really unfortunate term Mm -hmm. called Karen. I don't know if you ever heard of this before, but like I've been watching on YouTube compilations of basically entitled women. Oh, Karen. Having, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, having fits in stores mm -hmm. where it's like, yeah. I ordered a parfait one minute ago and I still don't have one and it's McDonald's. And they're just like, well, yeah. we are literally yeah. putting the nuts on it right now. I waited a full minute. What Let else? Me talk Do to I the need manager. to call the police? Let me talk to the manager. Yeah. He's like, are you guys having fun in the park? You don't you know you need a permit to be out here? I was like, it's a public park. What are you doing? I'm calling the cops right mm -hmm. now. It's just like, what is this lady doing? There's a great mm -hmm. video of a Karen um, knocking what all is... the face masks off of target because target's selling face masks now and she's and she's like i don't think you have to wear a face mask i'm throwing all yeah, of these on the yeah. floor it's oppression what by the it? government you don't need to be selling these it's what karen k-a-r-e-n K -A -R -E -N. what is that it's a name it's, it's a it's a stereotypical kind of a name meme about a, meme. A, a meme is an idea it's a meme of a white privileged uh middle class woman in Basically, america yes. today yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, like, let me talk to the manager because I'm not satisfied with my service or my product or whatever. Yeah, I'm is, uncomfortable. Is this, the, is this based on that woman in New York who... I, it's probably based who, on one there, there was a woman who came upon a black guy in Central Park with her uh -huh. dog, and uh, the dog threatened the guy off the leash he was he was a black guy who was watching birds he was a bird watcher uh-huh it and sounds like it but sounds it like it sounds like it been just one of many she called the cops on him mm -hmm. so the thing is you don't just have to be a white middle-class woman in suburbia with a sense of entitlement you could also be the son of god and throw a karen fit at the same yeah. time too and <laughs> and what we're seeing here is an example of just like Jesus, that fig tree isn't supposed to have figs for another like seven months. Well, you know what? I call I my uh, I can't take this anymore. You're not growing figs anymore. Where's the manager? <laughs> it's like you're the manager. <laughs> you're, you're God. It's like, well, you're not growing figs anymore for the rest yeah, of my life. Where's the farmer? <laughs> <laughs> Next time I walk through here, I want figs. <laughs> I want figs and I want them now. You know what? I don't even want figs anymore. I'm not even hungry anymore. So uh I did want to say this. Larry, you were touching on this, and I thought that was a really good point. Um mm. at the end of the parable, at least from Matthew's version version um jesus makes the tree wither and all of his friends are like whoa how did he even do that and then jesus turns around and he's like listen if you just believe you can do anything you can make you can like walk on mountains you can make things grow you can do whatever you want as long as you pray for it you can literally have anything you want and so then back in my head it's like he's giving a lecture to his friends despite the fact that he just threw a fit and his uh -huh. moral of the story is, if you pray for it, you can get it. But you just did something where you could have prayed for a fig and you didn't get a fig. Right. So why don't you just pray for a fig rather than destroy someone's property? And is he, in fact, hiding? Did it, In my head, this is how the story probably went. Jesus tried to make a fig happen. It didn't happen because he didn't have enough faith for it to happen. And he's like covering it up by using a lower power magic skill, like a level one burning withering plant <laughs> withering <Yeah>. spell. <clears throat> and at the end, he's just like, you know, I could have totally made that fig happen, but I, you, you, I, you know, that, that tree was a jerk anyway. If you yeah. pray for it, you can make it happen though. Like that's, that's what it's yeah. all about. Yeah, there are several ways it could have happened. And, and the most common, the most likely is that just, it's a story made up by his disciples later Absolutely. or his, uh, the 
of preachers who were trying to show how super uh, Jesus was going farther sure. forward. But uh, my friend uh, and uh, Dale uh, yeah. wrote a book and wrote a page, I mean, a blog. Um, how Jesus did it. Uh, how Jesus did it, which nice. explains how any magician back in those days could have done it. Uh, he could have come back later and saturated the leaves with a certain oil that would have caused them to wither and die overnight. And then the next day, he just come out and say, my, say my work, sure. that type of thing. But uh, just, just, just all kinds of different ways that uh, this could have happened. But the most likely one is it was just an embellishment on the Jesus story that was added later. Yeah, and my thing is— A legend, as it were. If we take this as a literal truth, if we take every sentence in all these different stories that don't even— that don't even coalesce with each other. Like they have conflicts even within themselves. But if we take this narrative as a truth and say this happened, it makes no sense from a character perspective of like who Jesus is supposed to be purported as, like a, as a forgiving uh, embodiment of an all-knowing being to be surprised that figs don't have figs, <laughs> fig trees don't have figs in, 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 in the weather time, in certain weather times. Right. Mm -hmm. But um. If it's a literal truth, it makes no sense. Like, this is a very incompetent, short-tempered God that's throwing a fit. You know, that's not cool and yeah. not deserving of worship. But if it's a parable, why are we using this as a parable when, I mean, if we can come up with a better, better narrative to explain things. Sure. On, and what is actually the message trying to be explained here? Like, are you saying, like, people who don't immediately give you what you want aren't worth your time? Like, is that the parable? Some people interpret that as like a message of Israel not being open to Jesus and therefore, you know, like he's able to just wholesale wash them out because he can look for people who will listen to him. But um, if that's not the case, what is what is the better moral? And, what, and if you have more freedom to make up the dynamics of a story that can better engineer expressing a particular point of view, you don't have to wrap your whole religion around this weird fig tree story. It just right. seems like. Make up a make up a make up like a thing about a bear and, an, <laughs> and yeah. trying to get some honey or something like that. Right. You can but do a you lot want. of the the apologetic apologists out there would say that uh, look, either Jesus is a liar, or he's a lunatic, or he's our Lord. <laughs> and I'd throw one more L in there. He could be a legend. You know, like King Arthur, you, you know, King yeah. Arthur, if he existed, would you really, if we found out that he existed, would you really think that the magic and Merlin and dragons and all that was real? Or was it just legend that grew up around this figure? Exactly. Yeah. Same with Jesus. Exactly the same as Jesus right there. Mm -hmm. I also feel like, how do I put this? We are really desperate to believe something that is true even when it's so remarkably improbable or absolutely not true. I can go to my lab right now and I can tell someone, hey, I just developed plant withering powers, right? <laughs> I prayed for them and it happened and they won't believe me. No one would believe, no Christian would believe mm -hmm. you that, hey, I can make this plant wither just by thinking and praying about it. Mm -hmm. But if I said, hey, there's a story about Jesus doing it, they'd be like, no, that totally happened. Like without, without a second thought. Yeah. And there are people Double out there standard. today, You, if you go online and look up people that are currently raising people from the dead, religious leaders on different continents and different um, nations, um, you will find them. Yeah, uh, there, yeah. There are many of them out there, but you don't believe those as a Christian. You wouldn't believe those or a Muslim. But those particular religions, you know, like Hindu, uh, Sikhs do it. and stuff. I want to throw it to George because well, I feel like we're leaving him out. Well, go for it, George. What do you? Um, well, first of all, I just looked up um, the the woman in Central Park, uh -huh. and her name is Amy <laughs> Cooper. So she's not a Karen. She might still I, be one. I, she, I, I just want to tell you what happened was that. Sure. Go for it. Go uh, for it. She she paid a price for what she did. She called the cops on this guy, mm. and uh, he brought suit against her, and he won. So good. good. <clears throat> yeah. good. It was for, for, you know, for wasting police time, essentially. Yeah, yeah. But, so uh, she, she got what she deserved. Um, now I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> um, George, I'll throw this story out at you. Um, there, are, there are stories of, like, Jesus resurrecting the dead. And maybe yeah. we can talk about this too, but um, you know, if if the I find the fig tree story so hard to believe just on its face value that of course I wouldn't go on to to believe the raising people from the dead story, but there's less contradictions in the 
guy who's in control of life and death and raising dead people story, then there isn't just the borderline, here's a fig tree that got destroyed. How do I put this? Even though it's a fig tree that's getting destroyed, you know, which is an easy thing to do, it's so out of character, it's so nonsensical, it makes no sense, the setup makes no sense whatsoever, that it's like, even if this is true, literally everything in this Bible makes no sense. If I have to exactly, take this exactly, exactly, I, I I agree completely. You know, and um, uh, the I, actually I was gonna I remembered uh, what I was gonna say. I wanted to ask a question based on something that Larry just kind of danced around. Go for it. Um, the. The dis disregarding of people of another religion, and you know, um, so so the question in my mind is, and this is almost a topic for a show, is does every religion regard all the other religions as cults? Uh, well, you'd have I wouldn't to say ask every single the, one. The individuals themselves, yeah. how they regard it, but I would think I've heard so many people say. We all we all worship God in our own way is how yeah. they dismiss the other religions. Yeah. But they won't finish that sentence and say, but they're all going to hell anyway. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> because, <laughs> because they don't worship in them in my way. You know? Right, right, right. And it's always like, hey, my like, how do I put this? The Third Street Baptists probably think the Second Street Baptists <laughs> are going to <laughs> going to hell in, in their own yeah, way. Or the but Protestant will... think the Catholics are or the Hindu. Or yeah, it's all, I think it, I know. think there's extremes even within the same denomination. Yeah. So, but the Unitarian that. Universalists think everybody's going to heaven. So there's different religions that yeah. believe different things. Yeah, I even say UUs or uni Universalists would some would also argue that there is no such thing as heaven or like there's no right. good reason to believe or souls for that matter yeah. hey don't get larry started no, on souls this is a fig tree show this is a fig tree show you did hey larry you did touch on something and i just want to touch back on this again uh i can't believe the fig tree story so of course i'm not going to believe the uh raising from the dead story but i do find the raising from the dead story a bit more palatable for a god story like that seems like something a god should be able to do bring people well, back from the dead Absolutely. I mean, certainly, you would think. So, what's your problems a, with that story, Larry? He'd have um, power of life over death, you know, theoretically. If I'm he could create up life from nothing, then he could create uh, life from dead. Well, what anyway, I want to know no. is what happened to all those dead people. Yeah, what, what happened to all those dead people? They're never <laughs> mentioned again. Like Lazarus comes up, you know, he he might have said something later in the Bible, but nobody ever asks him, where were you when you were dead? What was it like? Nobody yeah, like, goes into that there? at all. Mm -hmm. uh, not only that, but uh, getting to the uh, resurrection story about the time that Jesus supposedly came out of his tomb, uh, graves, according to Matthew, uh, graves opened up and, and the occupants came out of the graves and went into town and talked to many people. Yeah. But nobody ever says what they said. Nobody yeah. ever puts down. Uh, yes. Oh, we asked them about the afterlife. Mm -hmm. um, nobody ever mentioned a, a parade of zombies coming through Nazareth. But I'm sorry for taking this this topic on the rails, but I'm thinking like this that thing that you're telling me where like people are saying dead bodies rose up is like the same tone as what I hear is when I hear people say, well, no one was counting the ballots <laughs> in Michigan. <laughs> and, but you know, I have and, faith. Yeah. I have faith. How do you know it wasn't a conspiracy? Yeah. Don't you know Hugo mm -hmm. Chavez was X, Y, Z? It's like these people yeah. are saying it's like people can yeah. say anything, just, man. Those judges weren't, weren't having faith that it was a, a fraud. Uh, oh, it's the same thing we yeah. haven't changed in 2000 years we haven't changed we're the same people we're the same we're the um same. i i was not raised religious at all right so i have to ac acquiesce to you guys in a way sure. about the, the indoctrination and, and i'm i mean i'm i'm just stuck on one thing sure, sure. and that is this the whole concept of the devil and the whole concept of hell is what makes absolutely no sense whatsoever to me. And that is the proof that there is no God. End of story. Right. I mean, it is 
Uh, well, since so you're profound. Jewish, <laughs> the concept, <laughs> since you're Jewish, really, the Old Testament came from the Jewish Torah. I understand yeah. right. uh, that the afterlife was just where you went to sleep with your ancestors, like right. most of the the Eastern Later religions do. But it wasn't until, uh, in the words of Hitchens, it wasn't until the Jesus, meek and mild, brought hell to the earth mm. uh, until uh, he taught us that. Uh, that if you don't go through him to the kingdom of heaven, that you will end up in hell. And then Dante, of course, fleshed it out for us. Mm. And, you know, it's also time well, we're, we're at, wise. Oh, you know, to it. continue what I was what I was getting at for, is that, I mean, it, it's so basic. If God is God, if God is the ultimate of everything, why in hell would God tolerate hell at all? And why especially would God tolerate the devil? You know, well, especially if he's love, like everybody says. You know, yeah, if God is love, not. why would he even create a hell? Mm. You know? Or yes. literally I mean it goes even oh man, we can talk about this. We yeah. we have we're gonna we go into this break. more in the second half, but we yeah. do have a break. We do have a break. <laughs> There's so many things I wanna talk about. <laughs> Larry, why don't you give us a quick break? We'll come right back. Okay. Uh, this has been the Digital Free Thought Radio, our first half anyway. Uh, we're going to take a short break, and we'll be right back. 103.9 FM, WOZO Radio, Knoxville. Hello, and welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. I'm Dr. Five, and we're on WOZO Radio, 103.9 LPFM, right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Today is Sunday, November 9th, uh, sorry, 29th, 2020. Let's talk about atheism, free thought groups that you can join here in Knoxville. First, there's the Atheist Society of Knoxville, founded in 2002, we're in our 18th year. ASK has over a thousand members and you can find us online at knoxvilleatheist.org or you can go to Meetup or Google and search for Knoxville Atheists, it's just that simple. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you should still go to Meetup and search for a group in your town. Don't find one? Start, Start one. one! That's right. Another large free-thinking group here in Knoxville are the Rationalists of East Tennessee. They can be found at rationalists.org. Uh, be sure to go there and click on their upcoming events to find out what they're up to. Earlier in the show, we said we'd talk about the Knoxville Atheist Call-In TV show. Well, it's called Freethinkers United Coalition of Knoxville. That's too long of a name. That's too long of a name. Come on. Uh, Atheist Society of Knoxville. It's beautiful. Just pick that and stick with it, man. Yeah. But go to uh, YouTube and search for Knoxville Free Thought, and I'm sure you'll find a bunch of their shows. Like I say, they've been doing them for over 10 years. Also, if you're interested in getting involved with the TV or this radio show, just go to Facebook and look for the Atheist Society of Knoxville, the Rationalist Feast Tennessee, uh, or even Freethinkers Coalition United of Knoxville. And uh, just say you'd like to be on the show, either as a guest or co-host, and we'll see what we can do. What if uh, they're not the- uh, on Facebook? If they're not on Facebook, then they can go to our website, which is knoxvilleatheist.org, and uh, leave a comment or send us an email. Thanks. By the way, anytime anybody wants to send us an email at the show, uh, send it to askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org. Or just leave a comment. Right. Yeah. And where do we want to pick up there, Wombat? So it's Christmas season already, guys. Now that we just got over Thanksgiving, isn't that great? And you know, my favorite Christmas song is 12 Days of Christmas. The first song, the first day of Christmas goes like, on the first day of Christmas, my true love gave to me. Where is the love? Uh, Where is the love? The love, the love. love. Because I didn't get anything on the first day of Christmas. You only get something on the last day of Christmas. I'm tired of living in this, Uh you know, entitled country. All right. So, (laughs) Loma, we're listening to listener feedback from last week's show, which was, can spiritual healing save us from COVID? And we talked about how there are so many... 
when I looked at spiritual healing centers just around me, I found like like around 15, maybe even like like around 10 to 15 different centers where I can go to to not only get spiritually healed but get a, a degree <laughs> in spiritual healing. Thank you, Nashville. Uh, Lao Ma says, "Hey, I found 15 results for spiritual healing on Google Maps in my city of just around 84,000 people. Uh, there are massage therapists, and one is a shop which sells native art from the region. My country is in Canada, and others. And I was like, wow, that's a lot. That's <laughs> Thank you for posting. I asked people to post how many were around their areas if they Google map um, spiritual healing. Loma had 15. Um, Ecocentric Homestead said, hey, my father was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer at 52. He decided to trust God for healing instead of medical treatment. It grew slowly over the years. When it really started causing problems, he had an operation and chemotherapy, but died with a very painful bone cancer at 64. And that is a sad story. That's only 12 years later. And uh, we were talking about like how people will delay real treatment for like the spiritual treatment that is advertised as an effective way to get rid of real diseases. When in reality, there's no evidence to support that. And so we encourage people to, to rely on the scientific process, because in my mind, science isn't like a conspiracy. It is knowledge. Science is knowledge. It is a system. Right. That we yeah. use to it's know. verifiable and repeatable. And if it if it's not, then it's not science. And the only way to refute science is with more science. Yeah, because science is it. knowledge. It's not, it's not another thing. It's not another. It's not a it's not a technique on a shelf. It is the shelf. Right. <laughs> it is right. the thing. It's, it's what a, we know. Yeah. It's the most reliable that, way to know things. Too. Okay, I think that Steve, Steve Jobs is the poster child for spiritual healing. Oh, that's unfortunate. But yeah, yeah, it is. There are anyway. about there are fifteen places around Knoxville. I just yeah. did a Google search on it. Hey, 15, 15, 15, there must be something to that. There must be yeah. like some sort of weird mafia conspiracy going on. <laughs> hey, I want to tell you about conspiracies. We we're talking about Bible stories that makes us irk, irk a little bit when we think about them just a little bit longer. I wanted to get into the, the granddaddy of them all, I think, which is the, the Garden of Eden. We we're talking about um, God is, claims he's good, claims he's love, but then does some really bad things. And in my opinion, there's no worse thing you can do than basically create a paradise with a trap door in it <laughs> with, a trap. Who a you, trap. <laughs> with people who you specifically did not give the wherewithal of knowing what's right and wrong to mm -hmm. and you told them <laughs> and you to still do told something. them not don't do eat something. this thing that i left in hand reach <laughs> on a plant that's edible that will make you know what's right and wrong is and i don't and want you to do it. that Allow and I know you don't know. To come in to tempt him. I when know. He's supposed it's like, to be everywhere. He's supposed to be everywhere at once. Yeah. Here's and know crazy everything. Thing. Here's the crazy thing. Like, not only did they not eat the apple, but it took, like, like Adam didn't eat the apple. Like, he's like, Adam's like, hey, listen, I know you don't know right or wrong, but don't eat that apple. And Adam's like, I don't want to eat the apple. I'm totally good. It's like, dang, he's not eating the apple. Let me make a person that I'll tell him to eat the apple. It's like, that didn't work. Let me make a talking snake. <laughs> I'll tell a friend to tell him to eat the apple. He finally ate the apple. Thank goodness. Man, I went really out of my way to make this work. Yeah. Okay, you guys are all yeah. kicked out now. It's like, what? Well, you said there's nothing worse than that, but I don't know, killing everybody on the earth. That's that's and all the plants and all the animals. Uh that's that's kind of worse. It's it's it is morally reprehensible, but I just find the whole setup. The whole setup yeah, of yeah, why is. everything else happens in the Bible Lucky is because of the original sin. Yeah. And yeah. It's like mm -hmm. you you planned this all out mm -hmm. from the get-go. And even when Adam was like, hey, I don't want to eat that apple. I'm totally good. It's like, I'm just going to name the animals. Like, what kind of a job is that to name the animals? Like, because we don't speak the language Adam yeah. spokes. So he's no, just there no, like. But, uh, go ahead. Adam is literally sitting on the ground, cross leg, looking at a line of ants going like Tim, Bradley, uh, <laughs> Stacy, <laughs> Sally, uh, Jennifer. Like, he's doing that for yeah. eons. I don't know yeah. how long he was yeah. until this yeah. happened. But, like, that's but, his job. What a meaningless purpose well, think in about, life think about this though uh god especially i mean initially expected uh, adam to find a, a mate among the animals but <laughs> he didn't so he said oh i'm gonna have to create him a help meet so that yeah. he can have a mate what's going on there what's going on there you didn't think this all out ahead of time it's like no i'm freestyling uh -huh. baby it's kind of reminds me of <laughs> like a freestyle rapper who like isn't very good at rapping there was like a guy who calls himself the hip-hop apotamus and his like famous line is like i'm hip-hop apotamus my lyrics are bottomless 
and then he's just quiet for the next four <laughs> minutes. It's great. Just like you ran out of all the good ideas at the get go. Like you made the earth great. You made some plants great. When you start making humans in this whole paradise thing, like yeah. everything falls right off the shelf. But you planned this stuff from the beginning. George, I'm sorry if we're we're going off on a on a tear. I was going to ask what uh, what's on next on your list of questions. Next of our list of issues with it with the issues, Bible. Yeah. Uh, no co comments from listeners. Oh 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 oh. We we, we we wrapped what's up. Juicy? We wrapped up the comments. Thank you very much for leaving a comment on the on the on our YouTube channels. By the way, if you leave a comment, we'll be happy to go over them. And uh, Lauma and Ecocentric Home said thank you for leaving those comments. But um, we are talking about it's all about the figs today. And I think we we hammered home that a lot of the stories when we think about them in the in the Bible don't make sense. Here's the take home though: if they're literally true, that's unfortunate. But if they're just parables and they're trying to teach us a lesson about the nature of human nature, we can come up with better ones. And I think if you were to look at like any episode of The Twilight Zone, like, or, you know, yeah. uh, Alfred Hitchcock, or like some good movies that just speak about the, the human experience, you can get way more fulfilling spiritual development, if you want to call it spiritual development, from yeah. just watching good shows from people I than from this ancient story that's been translated so many times that a lot of the components don't. Well, th think about the moral uh, stories that are from Shakespeare. Yeah, uh, yeah. Work. There's a lot of uh, good moral teachings in, in Shakespeare, things that we can take away and, and live mm -hmm. in our, our everyday life. Absolutely. Uh, people, people always say that the <clears throat> Bible is inspired because of all the great moral teachings in it, but you can find those anywhere. Right. In any book and any uh, and many movies and TV shows and even radio shows. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we have radio going shows. back That's forever. Right. Uh, it's not a special source. Matter of right. fact, uh, I've written articles about how religion gloms onto things yes. that it likes. Anything that's good and moral in the in the society will glom onto it. I, I call it hijacking uh, and well, say, that's us. We did that. Yeah. I think that, uh, you know, one thing that religion has um, to, to offer in this context is that it's a, every church is a social club. Yeah. yeah. And but you don't every really need religion for that. <laughs> ev ev but every parishioner goes on Sunday morning and joins a group of people with within which he is accepted as as a member i think there's a great amount of power in mm. this you know the, the psychological um, yeah but it's hardly un unconditional as they would say it is no of course but but i mean it it, it is inclusive it is accepting right. you know since when does somebody go to a church and get thrown out? Yeah. <laughs> Until you mean before they know you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Until they realize you're an atheist trying to ask questions to their, their congregation. And it's, uh, though I would say this, um, I think you're touching onto something absolutely true because a lot of people will live their life, you know, if they're a single bachelor, for example, um, they will be like, hey, you know, I, I do what I have to do. I go to work and come back home. And maybe I have a small group of friends, but I don't have like a social club where people feel like I feel like I understand them on a fundamental level. If my religion is my fundamental, you know, purpose in life. And like when you go to church and you're brand new, people are hugging you. There's like physical contact. There's even like parts where you're singing. It's like I want everyone to get up and shake hands with somebody that they haven't talked to before and go around and just do that. That interaction is very, very it touches something very deep in like a person's mindset who doesn't have a lot of physical sure. contact with meeting people. And when you and there's uh, also go for it. There is also the um, the power of the repetition mm. of the experience. It will happen every Sunday. You know, I can look forward to this. If yeah. I lead yeah. a lonely life um, and I hunger for contact with other people it will happen as people do, do as humans yeah. will yeah yeah you know, we have a desire to desire congregate, to congregate. And, but you, you have to remember you don't need religion for that you can find multiple outlets for that you can join a theater group uh, you can join a community center uh, a charity get, get in a meetup group there's a whole thing called meetup.com meetup yeah meetup.com will help it 
when I moved to Knoxville for the first time, the first thing I did was go on meetup and I tried out volleyball. I tried out uh, poetry clubs, just groups all over the place. Knoxville is a pretty great city. And then I was like, you know what? I'm an atheist, but I don't think there's an atheist meetup group. There's no way that's going to be a thing. Typed an atheist meetup, boom, found Larry. And I'm like, oh are you guys still open send an email and they're like yeah you want to come on by i was like yeah. this is perfect this is great yeah. or covid hard... met every week yeah. <laughs> yeah it's not hard to find a group anymore we don't live in that society i think the only right. difference now is like if you're way out in the wilderness you know like you can still find like an internet group you can still find a a, a social club that's willing to talk to you over the video conference once a week or whatever you want to do it's it never been more easy than now to find people who want to hang out with you. And so you just have to make the effort to do it or start a club yourself. It's totally possible. Um, and yeah, you're right. Uh, monopolies on social interaction have been to an extent hijacked by religion. They don't deserve to have that, that character. They don't deserve to have that. And so we should work really hard to, if you are an atheist and you're now atheist, be open to other atheists that are around you because it's it's a hard community to be a part of by yourself and religion's waiting to get people like that on their side <laughs> just willing to sell them like hey let me tell you the story about fix mm -hmm. now you're interpreting it all wrong this is the meaning of it now hang out with me and give me 10 percent of your paycheck it's going to be great yeah. it's going to be awesome mm -hmm. um i would say the noah's you touched on noah's ark um when i was in lexington there is actually a museum built for the ark it's like supposedly a one-to-one -one model and i had gone up there before with boudreaux and we've done interviews because every year there's a protest because the the arc always finishes in the red because no one ever wants to go to it but they're subsidized subsidized by the state the state gives them tax money to stay well, in the black. which is unconstitutional absolutely 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 so uh there's a protest going on every year and uh we went there one of these years and in my head, it's like we are celebrating basically the genocide of an entire planet for, for the most part, like except for a whole family. Like it's in the same sense of how people wear a cross as like, hey, this is the symbol of my love for my for my God. It's like that thing is the thing that killed <laughs> the thing that you love so much. Right. The ark is a representation of like yeah. this is the, this is how God, you know, cleanse humanity. It's like this is a story about how God killed literally everyone except for one family, Men, women, children, plants, animals, everything, everything except for one boat full of stuff. If yeah, that story family. was true. Mm -hmm. It's it's a nutty thing to celebrate. That should just be like the most terrifying yeah. symbol. And it's a child story. I mean, you find it in every single biblical children's book, mm -hmm. and, and it just doesn't bring the message home that you mm -hmm. know what a, what a horrible thing it was. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> it's just this really bizarre thing how we're yeah, able to. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Like we're able to what is blinders? We're able to blinders. Yeah. Blinker it. Yeah. Or just focus on the thing that we want to care about and not think about the context of the situation. It's like, yeah. Jesus has magical powers. He can burn trees. It's like, yeah, but why did he burn an innocent person's tree? Why That tree was alive. And it's not even the season for making figs. Didn't you know that? Like, people are telling him that. <laughs> like, Matthew's like, and he went up to the fig tree, but it's not even the season for figs. Something's weird here. <laughs> or like with Adam and Eve, it's like, hey, I didn't tell these people right or wrong. And then I told them it would be wrong if they ate this apple. That'll teach them right and wrong. It's like, ooh, that's all on its head you should fix that you're in like four layers of a logical problem yeah. but uh there's a, every story has some yeah, weird thing about thing. another thing about the flood is that it's not like he was the only person on the on the world who had a boat i mean boats were admitted before that sure. and there were whole uh, societies and nations that had navies and with huge boats but according to uh the Bible, you know, he was the only guy with a big boat and yeah. only because God told him to make it. So George, are you really familiar with the Torah? Are you aware that if the Torah has a, uh, um, a flood story in it as well? And like any of the specifics about it? I was raised an atheist from the get go. Uh, okay, okay. And whenever I try to read the Bible, frankly, I fall asleep. It, I don't blame you. I, I just can't stay awake for the damn thing. I just, it's a problem. I, I did, I did say I would, I think we all go through this 
and in fact, this is like the path that it took me to my atheism myself is like, you'll say, you'll sit down and you'll read the Bible from cover to cover. Right. And I I start, do, I've, done, that. I've done it twice, mm-hmm. but the first time was when I was just absorbing it all because I was trying to remember everything and, and Bible study, just accept everything. And the second time was after college where I'm like, let me really sit down and try to figure out what the, what the hell I'm taking for granted here. And story after story after story from like the two different versions of Genesis that weren't compatible to numbers, which is like, this only adds up to about 6,000 years. <laughs> we need more people. If this is literally starting from the beginning of time to like now, we need more people in between here. We're missing some steps here. It's like, well, no, they all lived for like 5,000 years. So it's like, that makes no sense yeah. either. Something else is weird. Uh, well, I've, to... Go ahead, I've, go I've um, uh, you know, there have been certain times in my life when I have said to myself, uh, I, I'm living in this huge cult and I should know what these people believe, so I better read the Bible. Sure. It doesn't work. I mean, I fall asleep every time. Yeah, it's not an exciting book. And I think it might be engineered, it might have been originally engineered to not be easily read because it wasn't designed to be read from cover to cover. Like, you can tell that from the way how the book is situated. Like, it was made before books were even an invented thing. It was designed to be a thing that someone tells people to read. And if they have a problem, they know the verse to go to specifically to be like, oh no, here's your, here's your little piece of the Rorschach <laughs> test that I have here. Here's a little butterfly. You said there's no butterflies, here's a butterfly. And then someone says, oh, I thought it was a tiger. And you go to that person, you flip four pages and you're like, no, there's a tiger here too. It's totally fine. These, that's what it is. Uh, and you, if you do that enough and there's a big enough organization, you can have like a couple of guys at the top who are like, we know what's up. <laughs> we just need the money from the people to funnel up to us. That's basically it. And then. Yeah. Yeah. I, well, what's funny is that you're supposed yeah. to be able to pray for anything if you have a little bit of faith and it come true. true. But none of the preachers seem to know how that they can pray for money. Yeah. Well, I have yeah. a I have a friend, or had a friend, who was watching TV in California one day, one night rather. He was watching a Bible thumper on uh, cable TV. The Bible thumper was in a city called Concord, which has um, is a fairly religious sort of place. And the guy was hustling for money, and so my friend called him up, and he said, "Tell me." Do I have to pay God to be God? What? And the guy shut him off. That's funny. I'm also thinking like, so there's so many parallels between religion from the old time and then just how easy we're able to fall into dogma in the modern times. And I think the dogma that we're, that's being pronounced right now is like, hey, this election that we just had was a farce. It was a fraud. And I'm not conceding no matter what and we're gonna keep fighting. There's emails that Trump has been sending out to his supporters, despite being in a lame duck session, where he's like saying, this is our last opportunity to fight for America. Please send money now so that we can take back this election and our rights and our freedom. And he's sending it out to people despite the fact that I think he, he is very much aware that this is over, but he doesn't want to be in any position of debt or lose an right. opportunity yeah, he, to make money. He's using it like he's used everything in his entire life to make mm-hmm. money, to make uh, money, whatever pretext that he can push out there uh, right. and support to get support for. He will. Right. And he, the thing is his followers are sincere. The followers, despite the fact that they're, <laughs> they're a bunch of knuckleheads. <laughs> they he's are so polite. <laughs> they are so, <laughs> they're so sincere about thinking that this is the guy who's here to save our interests, right? This is the guy who's going to, you know, help my family and, and, and be out there for me. And, and it's the same sense of like, Hey, God's on my side. My man, my minister is asking me for money. I'll give my minister yeah. money because somehow that helps God somehow or the community that I'm in. I'm well, ambiguous about that, but I know yeah. I need to give this guy money. Trump, right. I need your $200 because I'll pay my lawyers to help to, to bring this case to the Supreme Court. It's like, it's only 200 bucks to do that. It's like, whatever. I'll just give money to Trump. Yeah, but evangelicals are, are raised from child, earliest childhood to 
obey for mm. obedience to an authoritarian figure. Yeah. Especially ones that are approved by the church. Right. And sanctioned by the church. And church, yeah. churches all over the country have been approving what he's doing, what Trump right. is doing. So and it's it just, weird. they're just following. They're following in line. No, you're right. Because if you don't have, how do I put it? Independent thinking is not something that you're born with. You have to train it. Right. Like critical right. thought is something you have to work on to get good mm -hmm. at it, and you have to keep working on it. Right. And if you never have the opportunity to think for yourself or to assess things critically on your own, you'll never just wake up randomly as a great critical thinker. You might be calling yourself a critical thinker. You might, <laughs> you might even believe it when someone calls you a critical thinker who's just using you for money. But it's something you have to keep working at. And it doesn't feel comfortable when you're doing it and, right. you, know, and you run into a lot of unknowns. But uh -huh. it's a rewarding experience because you know what's right. true things and false And that's one of the reasons why faith so, so often dies in higher education and college. That's where, you know, I learned better than just yeah. to have faith things. I needed to learn to figure them out, study them, research them. Yeah. And they also taught me how to research things in right. college. So. And it also, it didn't take me until grad school to like lose my faith I don't believe so. Well, I, to call myself an atheist, yeah, it, that took grad school. But for me to not believe in the Bible anymore, that was first year of just undergrad. Right. That was just, hey. Yeah. <laughs> first year, first quarter There's a difference, for me. Literally, yeah, yeah, yeah. Literally, like, first year, like, first ethics class where I'm like, I know what morality is. It's like, no, you don't. It's like, oh, geez, this book isn't useful. Well, let me get this ethics book instead. This is yeah. much better. Oh, my gosh. I can't go back to this. I can't read this. I don't know what I am anymore. Don't call me the A word. And now I'm like, just yeah. call me the A word. This is the easiest yeah. thing in the world it's not a dirty word it's not a dirty word hey listen we're five minutes um uh before we got to close uh i'm let's chat you can find me at this youtube station if you're watching it uh if not i'm on let's chat on youtube and i post uh these podcasts as well as uh videos called socratic examination where i talk to people about how they come to believe things and whether or not that method that they're using is reliable or not, I found it's a really good way to talk to people without having an argument or debate over sensitive subjects. And if you want to check that out, go feel, feel free to check it out on my channel. I have a bunch of videos. Um, George, what's one thing you'd recommend we check out this for next week, if you can think of anything? <laughs> I'm putting you on the spot. I, you got a favorite song? You got something? Um, no, but I just want to say uh, let's all be open to... Uh, new information coming in, so I would just want to share that here in rural Tennessee, I had gefilte fish for Thanksgiving. <laughs> Don't want to hear any more. You mean milk. the wilderness where you are? <laughs> yeah, in the wilderness where I am, there are two supermarkets that sell Jewish foods, and I don't know who's eating them. <laughs> I'm afraid to look up gefilte fish, but I recommend yeah. people watch maybe it stake out. I'm sorry, you do look it up, but maybe stake out the store <laughs> and watch the people coming in and going out and introduce yourself. No, well, well, see, because uh, I just have to share this with you. I'm no, it's a new gross. It looks I'm as gross as I thought it was going to be. This is nasty. That, li that lists all the churches in my county and the adjacent county, and there is 167 Baptist churches that I have counted. Wow. That's no. just, the just the official Baptist churches. And and then there's hundreds of other churches. Well, the only synagogue, because I wanted to know who was eating all this Jewish food at huh? the supermarkets. I found three Jewish entries among the churches, but guess what? They're all fake Jewish synagogues. They're not real. Oh, They're man. Jews for Jesus. They're evangelicals. Oh, no. And so I Jews still don't Jesus. know. <laughs> the, it exists. They're there. It's, it's rough. It's a rough, it's a rough life, man. Cause <laughs> it is rough. It's hard to find places that you can religion in, in the right way. Uh, that suits your interests. Uh, I don't know. Sorry for that. Hey, Larry, why don't you take us out? We're getting close to the end of the show. Um, what's going okay. on? Um, if you have any questions for this show, you can send them to ask an atheist at knoxvilleatheist.org and we'll answer them on the show. If you have any trouble with scrupulosity, that is yeah. leaving religion behind, I recommend going to recoveringfromreligion.org and find some help there. 
If you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe, or even as a podcast that's up and unavailable on podcasts at iHeart and podcast.com and all different Stitcher. kinds of podcasts out there. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe. Also, be sure to visit digitalfreethought.com for our radio show archives, atheist songs, articles on the subject of atheism. Also, our Facebook page. We have a Digital Freethought Radio Facebook page. You can leave comments there as well. My book is called Atheism. Atheism. What's it all about? All about. And it's available on Amazon. This has been the Digital Freethought Radio Hour. Remember, everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life, and we'll see you next week. Say bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Felt fish is gross. <laughs> <laughs>